Come on, put your hands together and give God a great praise. Hallelujah. If you know he deserves worship, hallelujah. Why don't you stand as we sing together, how great thou art.
Somebody say praise the Lord. I'm not going to be up here that long, but as I stood here and I looked, um, can you all do me a favor, media team, can you pop up that last verse you had on that says, uh, not the chorus, not, not the verse, not the refrain, not the refrain, whatever the last verse was, I'd let you know if it's the right one when you pop it up. Yeah, uh-huh, that's the one, yeah. Um, no, not that. You know, I'm, you know, I'm best with y'all. <laughs> yeah, that's the one we want right there. Um, I say that to you all because, um, and I'm not, I don't, do not have a heavy heart, but I believe one of the hardest things, you can keep playing, Sheldon, because you're about to sing that again. Thank you. Um, I believe one of the hardest things and one of the heaviest burdens for any pastor or any person um, to have to do is when you sit at the bedside of a loved one who is about to transition. And um, on this week, I had um, the task of going to see my aunt who was in hospice. Now, you, know, you all know I'm transparent, so I'm gonna be transparent. Um, my aunt has been in a nursing home for probably the last 15 to 20 years. Um, she suffered with Alzheimer's disease and um, I must admit, Sheldon, I was hesitant to go to the hospital. Um, first of all, I do not like going to hospices, I'm going to be honest, um, because the reality of life kicks in. But I went. Um, I went, and um, when I spoke to the, <laughs> to the receptionist at the desk, I said, I'm here for a clergy visit, and she asked me who, and my aunt has my last name, and she looked, and she said, are you a relative? I said, yeah, I'm a relative, but I'm here for a clergy visit. And she said, okay, and I went up there, and you all might not understand this, but Sheldon should and anybody else who has done it, nobody was there but her and I, thanks be to God. Which meant I didn't have to have any kind of conversation with any of my relatives, because what is there that you can really say? But as we sung that last verse, because you know, even though we're not in charge of life, and you know, we know that God is in control of anything, when you go into hospice and all you see is oxygen in the nose in one drip bag you know it's not long you know it's not long and I read everything that I was supposed to read and I was about to leave and I heard the spirit say stop and pray and make it personal see reading through the book is just going through and doing your job but this was a relative and regardless of the fact that I had not seen my aunt for 15 to 20 years I, I knew who she was and I just thought I should have a personal time to to pray with her and um the good thing is she knew who the lord was she knew who she was but i could imagine as we were praying then this comes up um because the very next day at six o'clock in the evening i believe is when she went home to be with the lord so that made me feel good because i didn't what i needed to do and i felt like it put her at ease but just to know that when christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home See, it's good to know when you're going through this life, you know where you're striving for. Yes, See, some of us get caught up in this place. Yes, yes. But it's good when you can sit with somebody who knows this place is not my home. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm just a pilgrim. Yes, Because yes, then it says, what joy shall fill my heart. Yes. And I could just picture as I was praying that she took a little time to bow, Miss Jeanette, in humble adoration. And then simply say, my God, how great thou art. And I share that with you all to say, live every day as if it might be your last. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I, I look around this morning and there are some faces I do not know. And I say good morning. And the reason I'm up here is because I want to beat Michael Sims to it. Because usually Michael says everything that I want to say. And then I have to repeat it. So this time he can repeat me. Happy Father's Day. Amen. 
Happy Father's Day to all the brothers. And then, you know, brothers, I got to put the same plug in for us that I put in for the mothers. Women, if you haven't started cooking, you need to hurry up and go home. Now, Sandy, in your case, because Jason is on a fast, so don't fix no desserts or nothing. We don't want you to mess up his diet today. But for those of you who don't cook, then you better make a reservation somewhere. You better do Uber, DoorDash, something. Because I don't want to hear any brothers telling me come next week or calling me at the end of the day saying, Pastor, I had to get home and I had to cook because there was nothing there. I need to tell y'all, see, y'all looked at me when I said this last time. But some people don't realize how far hot dogs and baked beans go. See, the thing about me is I don't never want to forget where I come from. I don't, you don't need to take me to no high fluting restaurant where I got to sit down and say, I want a steak and uh, give me a, um, a side of potatoes and something. No, nah, I don't need all that. I'm a real plain person. You can take me to Applebee's and I'm going to be just as happy as Apple, in Applebee's yes, as I would be in Fleming's That's or right. uh, what's the other place y'all like, y'all, y'all go to, uh, Maggiano's or Roma. I don't need all that. And the other thing is, you could go home, Sandy, and fix me a tuna fish sandwich. And that tuna fish sandwich, for me, would be like a thing of filet mignon. You want to know why? Because it's the thought That's right. yeah. that counts. That's right. Now, women, don't you go home talking about the past that I can fix you peanut butter and jelly. Here you go. It's the thought that counts. You know what I'm saying? Still take care of us, but it's the thought that counts. Amen? Amen. Um, I, I, I thank each and every one of you. What I really was trying to say is um, this morning <clears throat> we have somebody with us that probably has not been with us yeah. in this place, in this circumstance now for at least 40 weeks. Amen. At least 40 weeks. At least. Yeah, I'm taking it all. Yes, I am. Because I knew you was going to get it. So I beat you. <clears throat> So, so I, you know, I don't, I don't give anybody any more kudos than anybody else. But I need to say this morning um, that the Lord has allowed um, Nathaniel Boyer Sr. Yeah. Um, to, to be with us this morning. And here's the thing. See, I, I can't get too, too revved up because I don't want him to get too revved up. <laughs> but the last time we saw him in this place, uh, he had a Cadillac that was walking with him. I don't see no Cadillac no more. So that means God is a good God. Now, for those of you who that went over your head, see, um, I've come to understand that when we get up, a, up in age, sometimes we have to call uh, use a walker. We don't call it a walker. It's a BMW, a Cadillac, a Mercedes, a Maserati, whatever you want. It, it's your aid. But it's good to see this morning there is no aid with him. Um, he came in here, um, you at least have crutches or something. He at least got his crutches, but there's no, no walker. Um, so that's just a blessing in and of itself. Um, Brother Nathaniel was here when we first started all of this. That's right. um, and he sat right there in the middle. Look how far God has taken us. Amen. Amen. So this morning, um, I, I, I'm not going to say anything as I go to my seat now about y'all singing. Because y'all done already done that. You didn't even wait for the pastor to give you the green light. You said, well, he did it last week, even though he said... We ain't doing this every week, y'all. It all depends how spaced out it is. Maybe y'all thinking my age, my ears are failing me, but I'm here to tell you they're not. I can hear real good. I can still hear three and four conversations at one time. But what I will say is as long as you all are comfortable with it, then we're comfortable. Amen? Amen. amen. So um, I don't know where you want to go to now, Michael, but amen. God bless you. We in worship. We in worship. Bless the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 And I just uh, want to say good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, it is good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, as I told uh, Sister Jeanette coming up the sidewalk, um, I was not here last week because of my contract negotiations. Amen. <laughs> so I decided to play hardball and said, I'm not showing up today. <laughs> Until I get the terms I want. No, in all seriousness, I'm blessed also to have uh, joining with me um, a very special young lady. My daughter, Christian Sims, is sitting in the back of the sanctuary uh, with her grandmother. And her brother, Jason, is 17 going on 18. So the brother asked for a little bit more time at home in Tennessee. So 
Me and my daughter spent a little daddy-daughter time on the beach last week in Florida. Amen? All right. All right. So I'm just grateful that we were able to do that. I'm grateful that the Lord protected us and watched over us while we were away. Um, and I think that's important, um, particularly for fathers and their daughters. Amen? Amen? To establish that kind of rapport and to have that. So I love her, and I'm blessed to be back in the service with you all this morning. Um, I stand here to thank each and every one of you for your continued support of this ministry. Um, we remind you of the seven options that be available to you. Um, you can mail in your offerings here to 548 Queenstown Road. Um, you can use the drop slot in the finance room door. Um, you can use uh, the link on the church website, which will make your donation through PayPal. Um, you can use Givelify or the Cash app. Um, you can always leave your donations here in the basket in the Narthex. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, there will be some additional announcements that you're going to see on your screen. Um, one other thing I want to remind you all is that the sign-up sheet for uh, July will be coming out with some new updates and instructions. Amen? Amen. Um, so if all hearts and minds are clear, I believe we've covered all the announcements that we need to cover. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to go to the throne of grace. Amen. 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 So let's look to the Lord. All wise and loving God. Lord, when we consider everything that you've done for us and when we consider all the dangers, toils, and snares that you allowed us to escape. Lord God, when we consider that we could have woken this morning and found ourselves on our cooling beds, Lord. Lord. Yes. Yeah. Lord God, and when we think about and give you glory for the fact that all sickness does not lead to death. Ah, my God. Lord God, we have no choice but to come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise and to say hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, because you have been our help through ages past, Lord God. Glory to God. This week, Lord God, as we celebrated Juneteenth, Lord God, and remember the struggles, Lord God, and remember that you delivered us from bondage, Lord God. And that even when we were shackled in chains, Lord God, we found a way to give you praise. So, Lord, right now that we have no chains upon us, Lord God, how can we not stand and shout to the name of Jesus in this place? Lord God, I'm so grateful for the miracles that you've done in all our lives, Lord God. Lord God, I'm grateful for this Father's Day, Lord God. As we remember all fathers right now, Lord God, and all those men who act as fathers right now, Lord God. Yes, God. Lord God, we thank you for the examples of the fathers that have gone on, Lord God, for uncles and grandfathers and for brothers, Lord God, that thank have you. been an example, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. To show us the way that we should go, Lord God. But for your example, Father, for being the father that loves all your children, Lord God, without any reservation or hesitation, Lord God. Lord God, for being the father that decided to Send us a savior that would come and hang on an old rugged cross, Lord God. And allow his blood to flow from Calvary's mountain, Lord God. That we would be washed white as snow, Lord God. And that he would get up with all power in his hands, Lord God. And that when you called him back to glory, Lord God, you left us an advocate in the form of the Holy Spirit right now, Lord God. Which allows us to pray to your name, Lord God. Which allows our prayer to be heard on high. And that's why we have joy, unspeakable joy, Lord. We ask that you renew our peace, Lord God. That you renew our joy, Lord God. That you renew our strength, Lord God. That you heal our weary bodies, Lord God. We give you thanks and glory, Lord God, because we know that you're still a miracle worker, Lord God. We see the example in Brother Nat's life, Lord God. I see the example in my life, Lord God. I'm so grateful, Lord God, that you're still restoring sight to the blind, Lord God. I thank you right now, Lord God, that you're still causing the yeah. deaf to hear Lord God and the mute yeah. to speak Lord God yes, that you're still blessing those that call upon your name ah. that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every yeah. tongue will confess 
that you are Lord. That in the name of Jesus, Lord God, sickness will end and wars will end and famine will end, Lord God. And praise God, pandemics will start to end, Lord God. It is all because of you. It is all because of your mighty acts, Lord God, and because of your love. That love that you've shown upon us each and every day. The love that we feel as warm as the sun that is shining upon us right now, Lord God, on this day, which we will never see again, Lord God. A day that we had not seen before. A day that you knew we'd be here in this place right now, that you knew we'd be on worship right now, Lord God. A day that you knew we would be able to cry out to your name, Lord God. To give you all our petitions and all our cares, Lord God. And what's even greater is, even if we don't say a word, even if we don't say a thing to our friends, our family, or our wives, or our sons, or our daughters, or our husbands, you know everything about us, Lord God. You know all our cares and our concerns. And that's what makes you so great. That's what makes you omnipotent and omnipresent, Lord God, and marvelous and mighty and matchless, Lord God. And that's why we adore you. And that's why we give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. And because our weary minds sometimes omit things, Lord God, you gave us the road map when you taught us to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. One of my favorite Father's Day songs goes a little like this. It says, I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see you now, I'm laying it down. I know that I need you, so I run to the Father. Fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding. No reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon. My soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 again. All my condition had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a context for this kind of love. I see it now. I'm laying it down. You know that No reason to 
I can see you all came to have church. And I know we're supposed to have the reading of the scripture. But the spirit stopped by. So if it's all right, we might miss skip that today. But we're not going to skip the word. But I'm going to give y'all some time today, this morning. Because, again, you got to live each day as if it could be your own and your last. Exactly. And... Uh, I just thank Sheldon because, see, it's Father's Day, amen, and I don't care what anybody says. Mother's Day always gets a little more oomph than Father's Day. But here's the thing about it. When you think about Father's Day, you ought to give Father's Day a whole lot more than Mother's Day because, let me finish, because we serve a father that can do anything but fail so see when father's day comes you don't have to worry about honoring me yeah, yeah, yeah. but at least honor the father i know all you women were in here ready to jump on me just now because you know what you mean you get father more see i i, I don't I, I read in the book yeah. that you're not really supposed to call anybody father Except for the one. So see, when I say Happy Father's Day, as much as I miss my dad and as much as I look forward to one day seeing him again, I worship my father in heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, when, when, when I was young, Mr. Melvin, he, these, these days didn't really bother me. But, but now that I've gotten older, don't get me wrong, Father's Day isn't really a happy day for me. Because there's a whole lot of days I wish I could just wrap my arms around my biological father. And thank him for allowing me to become the man that he wanted me to be yes, sir. with God's help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So see, as much as we get caught up in these days, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mother's Day and Father's Day isn't happy for everyone. Because yeah. everybody doesn't have a mother and father to run back to and say Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day. But isn't it good to know good? that no matter where we find ourselves, yes. we can run yes, to the Father. Yes, thank you. Fall into grace. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I need to tell y'all now and share this with you. Father's Day now is the hardest day of my life. Yes. Because when I was growing up, Jason, I thought I had the meanest father in the world. Come on, sir. Come on. See, some people don't understand this. We didn't have time out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We didn't have one, two, three. We had do as I say and not as I do. And when I get done talking, I don't want to hear no more from you. And if you got something to say, I'm going to hurry up and end that conversation real quick. So see, Father's Day isn't always, I can't watch any movies that have anything to do with dads. 
because it's a void in my life. But I stand this morning saying I'm thankful to still have a heavenly father that walks with me, talks with me, leads and guides me all along the way. So for those of you who still have your parents, love them as much as you can. Because that's not a guarantee that they're going to always be here. Jason Jr., we're going to act like your parents not here. Because I remember when I was young. They might get on your nerves sometimes. I can tell you there were times I walked down the hall. I whispered though, Miss Regina, because I didn't want him to hear me. And I was like, Lord, please let a car hit him or something. But now I understand that everything he did, he did it to help me. So just learn how to put up with him. When they get on your nerves, go in your room, scream in your pillow. Because the thing about parents is we're not perfect. That's right. But we always want you to be better That's than right. what we are. That's right. And if we can see that you become better than we are, yeah. Christian, he might get on your nerves. He get on mine sometimes up here with me. <laughs> so I can imagine. And I'm joking. But everything he does, he does it because he loves you. Yeah. Yes. He does it because he wants you to be better than he. It might not look like it now, but trust me. So when you go home, pour him some cereal. Happy Father's Day. You gave him something. <laughs> he can't complain. He can't complain. Yeah. I'm going to do the best I can to get through this sermon. And then I don't really know where we're going. I guess we're going home. I, I don't know. Yeah. You all can stay here and shout, do whatever you want to do this morning. But I just want to get through this and I, I want to be able to sit down and rest and and go. I'm in a I'm in a good place, but I'm not in a good place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so I just need to do this for myself, so I can uh -huh. do what I need to do here. Um, I'm giving my media team time. Y'all, y'all good? Okay. Amen. See, I, I didn't want to rush them. Um, I know everybody else is sitting here saying he, he just go wherever he want to go. No, nah, I just had to go where the Lord told me to go today, because I might not have made it if I didn't. Um, can we look at the Old Testament, First Samuel, uh, chapter 17? And let's look at verses 32 to 49. It's a long one. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are just a boy. And he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I uh -huh. went after it and struck it down, uh -huh. right, right. rescuing the lamb from its mouth. Uh -huh. yeah. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Right. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion right, right. and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these. For I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from That's the wire right. and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, am, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, yes, the God of the armies yes. of Israel, yes. whom you have defied. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 
this very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Mm. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth so that all the earth may know that there is a God That's right. in Israel. Yes, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's. Yes, sir. Yes, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. My brothers and sisters, yes. the word of God, for the people of God, yes. thanks, be, thanks God. be to God. I, I greet all of us this morning on this 20th day, amen, of June in the year 20 of 21. And I greet us all with joy, peace, mercy, and God's love. And I say happy Father's Day again to every single person out here who is uh, standing or being a parent or acting like a parent or stepping in for a parent and just trying to help a child grow up and be loved. I stand declaring if it had not been for the Lord, amen, who was on our side. Believe me, some of us probably have no idea where we might be or where we could be. I, I, I don't know about anybody else here but I stand filled up because the older I get, Rhonda, the more I have come to realize just how precious life truly is. I stand here understanding every time the Lord blesses us, Nat, we ought to have something to shout about, something to give him the praise for, and definitely something to lift one or both or even our feet up about just to let him know how good we feel. I came to hopefully give somebody a word that will help them feel some of the joy I have at this very moment. I, I came, uh, Michelle, to try to help somebody understand that life is not as bad as it may seem. I, I came to tell somebody, Sandy, that even though it seems as though everything around us is going down and we have no idea of when or how things may change, we still have something to be thankful about that's right. That's right. because that's right. we are still standing yes, sir. And, and, and that's yes, sir. what I came to let each of us know we we've been dealing in a in a season of a pandemic for a long 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 time yes sir yes sir and, and I stand to say regardless of what has happened what is happening or what is about to happen when all is said and done I believe with the Lord's help, we come out still standing. Yes, sir. And that's what I want to use as a thought this morning, still standing. And, and I believe in order for us to understand why we're able to do this, I, 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 as you all know, we went right to that book of Samuel uh, chapter 17. We read all those wonderful verses. And let me just say this. I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail because I believe that most of us, at least at least one time in our lives, have heard the story about David and Goliath. Amen. 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 So I think I can skip. And I'm going to just give you some, 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 some tidbits, some, some information, some stuff that you might not have known because you didn't feel like looking it up. You read it, but you was like, okay, that's what the book says. And I'm just going to keep on moving. Um, but first we have um, Goliath. Goliath of Gath. Gath was one of the five city-states of the Philistines. Uh, the Philistines were located on the southern coastal strip of ancient Canaan, during the Iron Age. See, I'm going to give you a little bit. Um, they were the enemies of the Israelites. Goliath, who was from the camp of the Philistines and was their champion. Goliath, whose height in the text was six cubits and a span. How many people know how tall that is? <laughs> Amen. See, you didn't look it up. I took a little time to do that research for you all. <laughs> um, um, and, 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 but here's the thing. See, even with that, uh, as close as I could get is um, it says that his, his, his height at the shortest level was six feet and seven inches or nine feet and nine inches, whichever one you want to go with. They, they couldn't lock it down for me, Jason. They, they could only give me some, some variables. So, so that's your range. 
six seven, which I say wasn't bad, to nine nine, we got problems. We got problems. We got problems. Goliath, who had a helmet of bronze on his head, and who was armed with a coat of mail, whose weight was five thousand shekels. Who knows how much that is? Amen. So Denise, I did the work for y'all. Um, that's about 125 pounds, amen, of bronze. Uh, Goliath, who had greaves of bronze, which were protective armor or shin guards on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. Goliath, whose spear shaft was like a, a weaver's beam while its head was 600 shekels. Anybody want to take a guess? Okay, nobody. Uh, Jason, you in college, give us a guess. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. <laughs> He looked at me like, you better leave me alone this morning. That's anywhere from one to 18 pounds. I, I'm just messing with everybody today. It's helping my mood. Amen. See, see, I understand this, this giant named Goliath was no joke. Amen. And he was definitely ready to do battle. Yes, sir. Goliath, and now we got David. David, who would be the future king of Israel. David, who was a musician and a poet, but who on this day would prove to also be a warrior. David, who was an Ephrathite and was the youngest son of Jesse. David, who because of his age did not go to war, but rather went back and forth from Saul to tend to his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Can somebody please kick the air in? Amen. Uh, make it colder in here. That's what I'm trying to ask. Thank y'all. David, who went to the battleground to take food to his brothers and the commanders in order to go back and let his father know how things were going. David, who after getting there, saw Goliath and then heard how the king would give great wealth to the man who killed the giant and would even give his daughter and make the person's family free. Now, I don't want to say anything, but I'm going to talk to the brothers for a second because the women, y'all might not understand this. It said, if you can beat Goliath, I give you my daughter. Yeah. Whole lot of brothers would have been stepping up. Mm. Okay, not in here. I see y'all. Y'all was like, maybe you would step up, but I ain't stepping up against Goliath. Nine, nine, Pastor. Remember that. Uh, I'm the David, the one who, when people looked at the two standing side by side, would have probably laughed and said, David stood no chance against a warrior with the skills of Goliath. Uh -huh. I, I just need to know how many of us here understand that. Each day when we step out of our doors, there are some people who feel the same way about us. Right. Uh, there are some people who look at us and then look at the things we'll face that day and begin to laugh and say, there's no way we'll be able to stand up to the task. But maybe they don't know we know the Lord who would never put more on us than we could bear. Uh, there are some of us who begin to think no matter how hard we may try, there's no way we have the necessary skills to be able to beat the things that attempt to beat us down. And this happens at times because we forget, Angie, we have someone on our side that lets us know the more the odds are against us, the better our chances are for victory. Yeah, yeah. When the world closes a door, uh -huh. I'm crazy enough to believe that the Lord opens up another one right around the corner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so let's get back to this text real quick. The first thing we need to understand is size and experience doesn't matter. That's right. That's uh, right. David told Saul how he was able to keep the lions and the bears away from his father's sheep. And if it got too close, how he would chase it and strike it down. Uh, he went on to tell Saul the Philistine Goliath would be just like the lion and the bear because he had defied the armies yes, he did. of the living God. Yeah. Uh, don't think for one second there are not times in our lives when instead of putting our tails between our legs and turning and running as fast as we can, we must instead stand up to and face the Goliaths in our lives. That's yeah, right. Michelle, I'm right with you this That's time. Right. Amen. That's right. uh, we need to stop being afraid and instead we need to be steadfast uh -huh. Uh -huh. and unmovable. Yeah. Uh, we need to stop being uh, afraid and instead remember the battle is not ours. That's right. That's right. It belongs to the Lord. We need to stop assuming Goliath will always be victorious and begin to believe no matter what comes our way, we're going to be able to face it with the Lord on our side. Uh, when the people looked at David, they only looked at uh, what was on the outside. 
They only looked at his outside appearance. But sometimes we need to remember it's not what's on the outside that matters because the outside can look weary, wounded, and worn. However, our inside can be filled with a strength that only the Lord is able to give. Right. David didn't care about his outward appearance because he knew he had the Lord living way down on the inside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need somebody here to know or somebody who's listening with us this morning or watching with us this morning that we too can be assured as long as we have the Lord on our side. There's nothing we cannot stand up That's right. against. That's right. There's nothing that can have a hold on us. And there's definitely nothing that will keep us down. Second point. When we're about to go into battle, don't let others try to get us equipped for the war. Somebody missed that. Don't you go into a battle uh, uh, relying on somebody else to get you prepared for it. Uh, see, Saul thought uh, he was doing David a favor by giving him all the necessary equipment a soldier should have. Uh, but this was not what David was used to. Remember, David was a child. Uh, the, most of the people in the army were a little older and a little taller. So they put all this stuff, all this heavy stuff, this armor on, on David, which they thought would help. But in reality, didn't do anything but weigh him down. Uh, he was a little old shepherd boy, and, and as a shepherd, he never equipped himself with all of that unnecessary stuff. Uh, he, he attempted to put it all on, but he immediately began to feel how heavy and awkward it made him feel. I, I need somebody to hear me this morning to understand there are some of us who already are weighed down with all of the unnecessary stuff yes, we have going on in our lives, and then we go out into battle with the enemy. That's right. and, and we allow others to weigh us down with even more stuff and junk than we had in the first place. Uh, uh, when we get ourselves prepared to go out and face the day and whatever's going to come our way, we need to go out feeling as comfortable That's right. as we possibly can. Uh, we don't need to go out with any uh, extra mess that's going to weigh us down and cause our steps to get heavy. Right. We don't need to have other things in our minds that will cause us not to be focused uh -huh. on whatever lies ahead. Yes, and, and this is what we need to notice about David. And, and, and this is what's going to bring me to my final point. And thank the Lord I got through. Amen. Uh, after David put all of the equipment on, I imagine uh, somewhere in the back of his mind, Miss Genevieve. He said, wait one minute. This is not how I dress when I go out to watch over the flock. Uh, he knew when he went out with the flock, he took a staff, a shepherd's bag, some smooth stones, and a slingshot. Y'all need to get that. A staff, shepherd's bag. See, okay, I'm going to try to help y'all see this. So I got a, it ain't a staff, but it's going to work today. I got a staff, <laughs> a shepherd's bag that comes down, some stones, and a slingshot. That's all he needed. He didn't need no, no, no breast of arm, the armor bag. He didn't need all that mess. He didn't need the, uh, the shoes on his feet. Didn't need that. Didn't need the helmet. Right. All he needed was a staff, uh -huh. shepherd's bag. Smooth stuff. Smooth stones. Smooth stones, right. Not rough stones. Right. Smooth <laughs> stones. Yes, sir. And a slingshot. <laughs> I need y'all to keep that picture in there. But even after seeing all of the visible things he took with him, David knew that every day when he went out into the field, right. he took one more thing with him. Come on, uh -oh. Come on now. Come on now. I got my staff. Uh -huh. I got my shepherd's bag. Come on. My smooth stones, my slingshot, yeah, but just like American Express, I can't leave the Lord. Leave Come on Come now. On, so, so he had all that with him. See, I, I need y'all to know this. Y'all need to stop thinking that we're all alone. And remember, every day we go out into this cruel world, yes, sir. Yes, sir. the Lord is right there right, with us. Right, right. I believe all of us can visualize how the people who were there were looking and, and we definitely can imagine what they were saying. First you had Goliath saying, are you going to bring me some sticks? Oh. Well on this day Goliath would remember what we used to say as little children. Uh. 
Sticks and stones can break your bones. See, you can call me all the names you want, but this morning you got to remember David came. See, I just like this picture now with a staff, a shepherd's bag, smooth stones, slingshot, and Jesus all around. I need somebody to understand this. We, we got to remember that our steps are not ordered by man, but rather by the Lord. And so here's the giant who has the best equipment money can buy. He is like the Warren Buffett and the Steve Jobs of the world. He got the best equipment money can buy. And he's ready. And he looks out over and he says, you got to be kidding me. This is the best y'all got to offer? A little child. This got a little stick in his hand. Look at a little that. bag. Look at that. Look at that. He say he got some smooth stones. Right. And a little slingshot. Yeah. Look at what I got. I'm ready. Mm. But people got to understand. When you come up to fight somebody that's been anointed and appointed by Jesus. You can have all the equipment you want. But if you don't have the Lord way down on the inside. <laughs> I, I need like. Three minutes, because the one thing I like about the story of David and Goliath is, uh, Miss Susie, I can always make it um, um, United Methodist and, and use our methodology, amen. Because um, I like to think that as he approached, David was already picturing treating Goliath the same way that he treated the bear. That's right. I, I picture him coming with a staff, but then he pulled out that slingshot. Reached in and got that smooth stone, Jason. Yes, that smooth stone. And I like to think, because he realized that Goliath was a little bigger than, than the bear. That's right. That's right. He began to, now I'm going to see where y'all are this morning. See, you know, even though I'm in church, I'm always going to be a little bit on the secular side. So I imagine Michael, he reached back like Bootsy Collins and said, wind me up, baby. <laughs> and he began to move that slingshot. And I think the first time it went around, he said, that one was for God the Father. <laughs> I, I would like to think Angie he looked again and said, I'm getting my speed just right, <clears throat> but I got to swing it again because that was for God the Son. And then I, I, I would like to think, Miss Wendy, when he got a little closer, he got that speed just right. And somewhere, maybe they didn't hear him, but he said, In the name of God the Spirit, yes, I'm going to let this smooth stone, not a rough stone because the rough stone wouldn't have landed right, right. smooth stone, go. And how many of us watch basketball? Yeah, yes, sir. No, it's yes, no sir. shame to watch basketball. Yes, sir. So you know how when Michael Jordan or LeBron or Steph Curry, they shoot it, yeah. and they know it's going, and they just stand back and watch it? That's right. I like to imagine that when he let it go, you know that's right. he just sat back yes, and began sir. to admire what the Lord was about to do. You know that's right. See, everybody looked at him and laughed and said, how is this little kid going to beat this giant? Yes, sir. But what they did know that not only did he have his staff, Shepherd's bag, right. smooth stones, right. and his slingshot. There's a, a verse in the book that says, goodness and mercy uh, shall follow us. So I like to think that goodness and mercy were, were following David as he went. Because the one thing that Goliath didn't do that David did is he went to fight Goliath in the name of the Lord. That's right. Don't think you can win your battle if you fight it for yourself. Yes, sir. But you got to remember that if you stand up and fight in the name of Jesus, on, giants do fall. Yes. How do I know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. That's oh, right. Sheldon. That's right. That's right. Come on, Sheldon. Sheldon, they got a song. I believe it was Jonathan Nelson. And Jonathan Nelson said, I know my identity. Yeah. My name is Victory. David knew who he was. Uh, and it didn't matter who his daddy was. The real thing that mattered is he was a child of the Most High God. Yeah, yes, and sir. David knew no weapon yes, sir. Yes, sir. formed against him yes, sir. was going to prosper. Yes, David knew, uh -huh, uh -huh. though my enemies, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, media team. I, I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to just stay. I'm sorry. But y'all keep it up. Y'all doing good. Y'all doing good. David knew. That on this day, Goliath was going down. And what I need somebody to understand and hear this morning or watching with us or listening is, we've been dealing with a whole lot of stuff. Yes, we have. Yes, 
Yes, there have been a whole lot of people around us yeah, who have, have gone yes, on to be with the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But isn't it good to know uh -huh. Uh -huh. that in spite of everything that's happened, Instead of every Goliath that's come our way, yes, sir. Yes, instead sir. of in spite of every problem, right. in spite of every situation, right. Right. in spite of every circumstance, yeah. in spite of every slam door in our face, right. in spite of every time somebody told us no, uh -huh. the Lord still allowed us yeah. to come out of this battle. Still standing. Still standing. Can, can you all do me a favor for 10 seconds? Think about the last time the world looked at you and said, you're not going to get through this one. But God stood back and said, you shoot the shot. And yes, then just stand back and watch it. And watch yes, what's going to happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need you to understand this. Uh, when you let it happen, happen the next time, when you let it go, stand there. Watch the beauty of it. Watch how beautiful the Lord makes it. But when it's all over, said and done, and you see your Goliath laid out, stretched uh, out on the ground. Yes, sir. Don't just walk away uh -huh. like you knew it was going to happen. Right, right. Take some time out somewhere, Kip, to step back, look at the beauty of it all, and say, well, if it had not been for the Lord wow. who was on my side. Wow. See, see, I know David was happy, but David also knew if it had not been yes, sir. for the Lord who was on his side. Wow. David also knew that everybody else laughed at me. How many people in here been laughed at before? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. How many people have gone in for something and everybody looked at them and said, I don't even know why you're wasting your time. Mm. You're not going to get none of that because yes, it's mine or mine. Uh, but they don't understand. You're walking in with something they might not have because you walked in with your staff, your shepherd's bag, your smooth stones, yes, your slingshot, and the Lord. I don't know about anybody else this morning, but I am still so happy right now that as we get to the end prayerfully of this pandemic, we are still standing. And I believe not only are we still standing, but we're going to be standing better now than what we were when we went into it. Because now we're going to start being about our father's business. We're going to start doing what the Lord wants us to do. I need y'all to know. I love the story of David and Goliath for one reason. And it did not hit me until I read it this time. I never really paid attention to the sticks and the stones. But isn't it good to know that you can come with sticks and stones and slay any enemy. That's right. Anything the devil sends your way, you can come with sticks and stones That's right, and still have the victory. But when you get the victory, make sure you thank the one who gave you the victory. See, it's all God. That's it's right. never us. That's right. That's right. And if you really believe this morning that this thing called life has nothing to do with us, but it has everything to do with us living the life that Christ would have us live, as we prepare to leave this place and tell anybody who does not know the Lord for the pardoning of their sins, just put your hands together and give the Lord a hand praise because we're still standing this morning. Again, if you do not know the Lord this morning for the pardoning of your sins, you don't have a church home, you just want to have a closer relationship with Christ, we invite you right now to either raise your hand if you're sitting here, send a comment if you're watching with us on Facebook or Zoom, and we will do everything in our power to begin to introduce you to this man named Jesus, the one and only one who can still save all men, women, boys, and girls. I did the best I could to help and get the brothers out because the restaurants are about to open, amen. And you can't say that it's crowded because the one thing we know is that Father's Day, the restaurants ain't never crowded. So you can get into the best restaurant that you want right now and find a seat. The two of you can eat and have a good time, but still even thank the Lord for that, for just allowing you to be able to go to the restaurant in the first place. So again, from, as always, the best United Methodist Church on Queenstown Road, we tell each and every one of you we love you. Uh, we thank God for allowing you to be here with us as you leave if you are here. We, we ask that if you have your offering and you're giving it back to the Lord, drop it right on the out, outside of the basket. We're asking if you're listening with us this morning and you'd like to, to donate or give something to show how you would like to sow into this ministry here on Queenstown Road. We ask that you do that. We've already given you the seven ways. You can email. I mean, you can mail it to us. 
You can go on Cash App. You can go on Givelify. You can go on our website, do PayPal. You can go through your bank. Oh, uh, guess what I'm trying to say is any way you, any way you give it, we'll be thankful. Amen. Amen. So we ask that if it be the Lord's will, we'll see you again in this place on next Sunday. We say again, happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. Um, I say happy Father's Day to men and women because there are some men who are playing the role. There are some women, excuse me, who are playing the role of a father, just like there are some fathers who have to play the role of mothers. So I say right now, God bless each and every one of you. May heaven continue to shine and smile down upon us until we meet again. God bless you. God bless you. Where?